Hello again and welcome to part 2 of my video on repairing the Hoover Dustette. As you saw from the previous video it's all in pieces and we're now going to put it back together again. The first thing I'm going to show you is I found a spare Hoover Dustette armature in my box of goodies and I thought oh goody I've got a spare armature but I've tried it in the actual motor and I wanted to show you what a bad armature sounds like because this one is actually faulty and I thought it was a good idea to, to take a bit of film so you could see what it sounds like compared to what it should sound like. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch on, I've got the motor connected up, this is the bad armature don't forget, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it on now and you'll hear how it sounds. With the dust set, it's an enclosed motor, you can't see the commutation, the sparking, uh, unfortunately that is because on other motors with an open frame you can have them running you can see that they're, they're burnt out but with the dust set you can't because it's all sealed up. Just shut the lid down. Okay. Horrible. I won't run it too for too long because it will burn out the field cores if I leave it. That indicates that armature has had it. And when we've got the other one together I'll show you the other armature in and you can hear what it should sound like in the same condition. Now, reassembling a Hoover Dustette motor, it's a very simple job really, but they are a fiddly thing to get right. You can spend hours trying to get it right with little tiny things that go wrong that you don't think about at the time. So there are a few important points. First of all, make absolutely sure you've got the correct amount of washers on either end of the armature. If you don't do that, what happens is that when you put the fan on, it will either be too tight and it won't turn, the motor will jam, or it'll be too close to this and as it goes around it'll scrape. So you've got to get it just right. You can't put washers on this side, they've got to go on the inside. So if you can, make sure you use the exact same washers that come off. What you need to do is to get minimum end play when it's assembled with free rotation. If you get too many washers, it will be too tight and the thing won't turn freely. And if you get too few, it will be too loose and it will rattle about and make a hell of a noise. So make sure you get that right. Now the other thing to mention is, with the commutator, that's quite clean, you don't need to polish it up. I've seen people, they shine them all up, you don't really need to do that. As long as it's clean, that's, that's the main thing, just wipe it round. If you want, you can use a little bit of methylated spirits on it, and just wipe it so that it's nice and clean. The next thing to think about is the bearing lubrication. Hoover always states, and even states on the pack, you might not be able to read it there, uh, grease impregnated do not lubricate. You're not supposed to lubricate them because, as I mentioned before, the oil's built into the fossil bronze bush and if you do put oil in it tends to wear them out quicker. Now the problem is that this thing is sort of mm, up to 70, these can be 70 or more years old and of course the bearings dried up so you do really need to put a little bit of lubrication on it. But my advice is don't use oil, use grease. Moblux grease number two. Funny enough, that is actually genuine Hoover grease as supplied to us by Hoover Limited. I'm just using my finger, I know you shouldn't do, I'm just going to put a little smear of grease on that end. You don't need much. Just enough to make a nice free run. And do the same on this end here, this journal. Now take the end cover and insert that in there, noticing that you've still got the washers in place and the same on that end. So that's that, and then all you've got to do is get the motor case in, which we've already cleaned up, and pop that in there, again making sure you've got all the, the required washers on there, and pop that in there, and hopefully that will assemble. Now if you remember I mentioned, make sure you line it up with the little marks you've made. There's one mark, look, and you've got to turn this around until you get the right mark. There it is. There's the line I put on it earlier, and that's, that's about it, look, so it lines up. Just make sure it rotates. Then it's a matter of putting the screws in around here. There are four small screws. Pop the screws in. Right, I've got the four screws in, tighten them up. Now just check the armature before you do any more and make sure that, that it rotates freely, which it does. I'm just going to check the fan spins. There you see the fan spins fine, it doesn't rub on here. It, they're a devil of own job sometimes to get that fan to clear that. You can't put washers on this end, but you notice there's a little tiny bit of the armature journal, uh, the shoulder of it sticking out there, which the fan rests on, which is just about right. You don't want it out too far, and you don't want it in too far, otherwise it will rub. So that's about right. So what I'm going to do is pop the little nut on the end. Now, it's a left-hand thread, don't forget. 
Now you do not need to tighten this up. A lot of people get a spanner on it and tighten it up. You don't need to do that. Do the fan up just finger tight. The reason for that is when the motor starts up, it will actually tighten itself up and it will balance the fan. So that's quite an important thing. Don't tighten that nut up, only do it finger tight. You don't have to put the fan on uh, at this stage if you're testing it, but it's, I, I'm putting it on because it's better. Now the next job you've got to do is put the carbon brushes in. Make sure you get the right curvature on the brush there when you put the brush in because they are curved where they've already been worn down by the armature. And If you put those in now and you get them the right way around, you'll get good commutation. If you put the brush in the wrong way around, against the curvature, then you'll get poor commutation and it will take ages to bed in. So try and, try and get them in correctly. It was always suggested it was a good idea to put them in exactly the same position, uh, that they come out the, the same angle, if you see what I mean. And in fact, Hoover always used to put a little mark. If you take an old motor apart, you might find a little plus or a minus on the brush. And they've done that, so get the brush exactly in the same position. The trailing edge usually exhibits a burning mark and that you can tell which way to put the brush back in if you, if you want to get it identical. It doesn't normally matter. But if you, if you think about the motors going in that direction, clockwise looking from the fan, the trailing edge will be on here. So if you look at the brush and you can see a trailing edge and you put it in exactly the same as it come out, then you should have good commutation. So having put the brushes in, just do the little taps up. Your finger tight is enough actually. Don't try using a great big screwdriver. Those are tight enough. Right, that's both brushes in, and that seems to turn quite freely. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to connect the little motor up, uh, like I did with the one with the faulty armature, and then you can hear the difference, hopefully, if it works all right, that is. If you're not qualified, don't do what I'm doing. I've been doing it for many, many years, so I do know what I'm doing, but be very careful. If you're not sure what you're doing, don't do it. Get somebody qualified to do it for you. That's quite important. I'm going to connect it up to my little quick tester and we'll see if it works. This could be an embarrassing moment folks. I'm going to hold it down on my hand. Normally you, you would put it in a vise or something but I'm just going to hold it and in fact I'll put something underneath it so it doesn't vibrate on the wooden surface and then we'll switch it on and see if it works. Just I'll just give it a brief swing first. Look at that. Okay here we go then. Okay, that's much better. Sounds much lighter than the other one. That sounds a smooth motor to me. If you're if you're daft enough to plug a motor in like I do when it's not in the machine, do be very careful to hold it firmly. My advice would be to put it in a vice or something if you're going to do that, because it will spin around and if you've got it on the bench and you turn it on and you're not holding it it will fly off the bench at a great rate and it could even clout you one so be very careful now having run the motor for a little while that fan nut so you see is really tight now that's per that's tightened it up fine and it's balanced the fan so do not tighten that up with pliers or anything just let it tighten itself and you've got to poke this through pulling the wires out until you get to that little like that so you can screw it in and you've got to make sure this isn't wobbling about which it is you see even when that's going to be screwed up it's still going to wobble about we've got a problem with these little bushes around here that keep the motor in place and I've taken the one out to have a look they're, they're worn down flat now the annoying thing is somewhere in amongst my boxes I've got some of these actual bushes new ones but I've, I've searched around and I can't find them so I'm going to have to fashion something else. So what I found in my box of odds and ends are some of these little bushes here and what they are actually are cooker door buffers that I've had for years. If I cut these if I cut these down a little bit because they're a bit too long I can pop them in this little piece here and they'll do the same job. Now the easiest way to cut them down because they're a bit awkward being rubber is to use a, a sharp razor blade like this. Uh, now I've cut that down I should be able to fit that in and it'll do the same job. So now what we're going to do is try and pop the motor in. If you twist them together you should be able to poke them through that hole while you assemble it. There we go. Now I've got to fish this down through here without pushing the buffers out. So the screw goes in there but you've got to, it's the same screw that holds the handle on. 
So I've got the wires through and I've got it in the right position. Now if you look now, you see there's no, that's very firm in there now and it's central as well. So that should hopefully solve the problem of that moving about. Now I've got to get that screw in there and it's a fiddle. So you put your finger up to hold the motor in place while you screw it up. But These dust tests were always a fiddle to do. I dreaded taking the motors out. I did everything I could to avoid it. If I could try and mend it, if it was blocked up and I had to clear it, I'd poke the wire down. I'd spend ages rather than take the handle off because there was such a fiddle to do. Well, here's the little brush that I showed you earlier that goes on the front of the machine here. And as you can see, it, it's pretty... <laughs> pretty badly worn down there are no bristles hardly on this end anyway here now there's two ways around this if you haven't got another brush and I think you find it very difficult to obtain one now it is possible to repair these I've done it myself in the circumstances though I've sorted about in my box and lo and behold I've actually found a new one look with complete with unused bristles on it so that will be a simple job for me just to screw that on if you've got the time and you don't mind spending the time doing it you could take these out and take the bristles out of a new plastic brush that you'd use in a, a modern Hoover. When I say modern, it's modern to me, but it's to most people, they're old hat, aren't they? But the plastic ones, which are readily available, could just remove the bristles and re-bristle this. Now, if, you haven't, if you're desperate and you want another way of doing it, and you haven't got any bristles or anything like I just showed you, you could get an old paintbrush and cut some short strips of the bristles off, and then get a piece of wire and wrap the bristles around the wire in the same fashion as this is and put that through and fashion up some new bristles that way. I mean, it's perfectly easy to do that. So don't give up if you haven't got a brush that fits it. I found some brown PVC cable, which I think I'm gonna use on the cleaner. It's, I've put the cable through and as you can see, I've just temporarily joined it up without putting the switch in so I can try it and see if the motor runs all right. Uh, before I put it all back together. So having done that, what I'm gonna do is turn the mains block on and we'll see if it goes. Okay. Now I've tidied the cables up a little bit by uh, putting some eyelets on, some crimped eyelets, and some uh, a small length of heat shrinking sleeve in just to keep it tidy, because these were a bit ropey on the end so that's made it safe so all you've got to do basically is to connect the neutral lead and the one of the leads from the motor the shorter one via this longer screw into that little thread in the bakelite handle there to join the neutrals up and then these two wires go to either side of the switch if you don't have any eyelets it's perfectly okay to make your own eyelet using the wire itself just twist the conductors together like that and then wrap it around a screwdriver and then just pinch it with your thumb like that and just twist the screwdriver around gently and then you can form a little eyelet in the wire and then put the screw through that and that is perfectly acceptable that method has been used for many many years um, quite successfully in service so there's no problem with that whatsoever as i mentioned i wasn't completely reconditioning the machine i was basically just uh, doing it as an exercise to show people how to actually repair or service a Hoover Dust Deck. So uh, all that remains to be done now is to plug it in and see if it works. So I'll shut the little lid down on my connector box and we'll switch on. Light the blue touch paper and retire as they say. The number of times I've said that and I've switched something on and it's gone off bang is amazing actually. So I shouldn't, so cancel what I've just said. I will start again on that. I'm just gonna switch on and see if it goes. Here we go. So there you are, that's my little video on how to repair and service a Hoover Dust Debt Model 100. Well that's it folks, we're all finished now. Uh, I hope it's been of use to someone. There must be somebody out there who's got a Hoover Dust Debt Model 100 and hopefully they may pick a few tips up on how to repair it. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I've finished now. I've had enough with it, it's taken a long time to do this one. Anyway, we've got a nice little Dust Debt that now works. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Goodbye.